half in the bag. Why the fuck are you watching this? We're back! Somebody there? Another day, another dollar. Time to get back to work. Where have you been for four weeks? My VCR ain't gonna fix itself. Why, well, I still can't watch my copy of Russian Terminator. Damn it. You're what, wait, what? You're supposed to be here to fix my VCR. I'm paying you $75 an hour, God niblet. To do what? To, to fix my VCR. You've been doing it for, for, for six months. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, we're, we've been working on that. Jay's actually outside getting some extra parts that we ordered from the... He's getting some extra parts in the car. Couldn't do much work without those parts. Ah, good, you brought the parts. Those are the parts? You're going to fix my VCR with beer steins? Mmm, beer steins. What? He still thinks we're fixing the VCR. Oh, oh. You're gonna have to talk up. I can't hear you when you whisper. How about a toast? Sure. To Adam Sandler's career. May he continue to make more films. Cheers. That's bad luck, right? Yes. I hope so. In every family, there's one person who drives you a little crazy. I gotta pick Jill up at four in the morning. She comes once a year and she's leaving on Sunday. But during the holidays... Jack, no fighting this year. There's no escaping it when it's your sister. How we doing? Your twin sister. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag. Today we're going to talk about the Adam Sandler film Jack and Jill. We know it's been out for a while now and you've probably forgotten about it, but here we are and we're going to talk about it. Jack and Jill is theoretically a comedy starring Adam Sandler as both Jack and his obnoxious sister Jill, who get into all sorts of fuck, ah! fuck, ah! shit, ah! whatever. Then someone farts. How did you memorize what the, the tagline on the poster so accurately? So we did not want to watch this film at all. A universally rejected and critically panned film. Yes, it yes. Is. Although it did get a 4% positive rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm, mm, that's interesting. Because um, CNN just released a, a recent study. It was a scientific study where they um, they determined that 4% uh, of film critics are retarded. Oh, really? Yeah, that, oh, okay. um, that uh, there are special needs people reviewing films. Are you going bald? Huh? No, 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 you're getting fatter and your hair doesn't realize it needs to cover more face. Okay. We almost felt obligated to see it after that. It's yeah. Like we we kind of have to now. It all came at an interesting time because we had, uh, just prior to that, been making fun of the zookeeper yes, as being yes. a fake movie. And now the zookeeper looks like a uh, fucking Citizen Kane. Jack and Jill looked like a legitimate fake trailer. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people were like, "This is this a joke? Because Adam Sandler's previous film, Funny People, he's sort of uh, playing an Adam Sandler type character in that. And there are all these fake trailers for similar types of movies, just lowest common denominator, awful comedies. You're the one that has to wizard to make you young again. I didn't mean this young. And this looks, Jack and Jill trailer looks like it could have been one of those fake trailers. Yeah. But it was real. We Ooh. saw it. We should explain, though, that this review will be a little bit more in depth than your regular just kind of ripping on Jack and Jill review because after we watched the film, we discovered that it was much more than just a bad film. So yeah. before you shut this off and go, I know the movie's bad, <laughs> I'm not going to see it, click. Right you will learn some information about the, the, the sinister underbelly of what Adam Sandler is doing mm -hmm. and, and how you're all being manipulated by this epic con man. Con man is in quotes. So let's talk about Adam Sandler. Um, I despise Adam Sandler. Actually, you know what? I can't even say that I despise him because I haven't seen one of his movies. I've seen him on SNL a lot. 
Yeah. Um, I haven't really liked most of the stuff he's done on SNL. The, the weird thing is, is like when you look back at that era, uh, Phil Hartman, uh, Chris Farley, all those guys, I, I could always think of like a character that they do yeah. that I'm just drawn to or I remember fondly. Um, but with Adam Sandler, I really can't. Well, he had, uh, he was opera man, he was canteen boy. All of his characters seemed to be something man or something boy. And it almost felt like a parody of reoccurring characters on Saturday Night Live as opposed to trying to be a reoccurring character. Yeah. I don't know if he's clever enough that that was what he was actually intending to do, but that's how it came across. You might be looking into that a little too. I, I'd probably put more thought into it than, than Adam Sandler has in his entire career. Yeah. So. So Adam Sandler, every time I think of him, I think of someone who's shouting. Ah, what are you doing? I think I saw the first 10 minutes of, of the movie where he plays a retarded person. That's everyone. But my point is I, I really don't like Adam Sandler at all. I just don't get his humor style. Um, but whenever I talk with people, there's always that, that, that but. It's like they say, I don't like Adam Sandler. They say, well, his new movies are bad, but... The Water Boy and Billy Madison are good. And everyone goes back to his first three or four movies. Yeah, and I, always, I will admit, everyone says that. Every person on the planet goes, Billy Madison is good. Yeah. And I did try to watch a little bit of Billy Madison. <laughs> I, just, I, had to turn I, I, I liked Billy Madison a lot. Uh, I saw it when it first came out on video, so early high school probably. Um, if I watched it for the first time today, I probably wouldn't care much for it. I don't think I would hate it like some of his later movies, but... There's something sort of creative and weird going on in that movie. Um, it was before he got horribly lazy, which is what all of his movies are now. So in true snarky, nitpicking asshole fashion, <laughs> we devised two separate lists before seeing this movie. Yeah, we wanted to uh, find a way to keep ourselves uh, invested in the movie in some way, or we didn't just have to sit there and watch it. Well, Jay has seen a lot of Adam Sandler comedies and yes. kind of knows what they're all about. I have not seen one. The only Adam Sandler film I've seen is Punch Drunk Love, which of course is not an Adam That's Sandler film. That's not an Adam Sandler movie. Um, and uh, That's made by a real filmmaker. Yeah. So. yeah, and my list as the, the uh, Adam Sandler expert between the two of us is comprised more of... What a shameful title. I know, I know. So my list is comprised more of things that are reoccurring in his movies, not just from movie to movie, but reoccurring elements in the movies themselves, okay. based on my experience and seeing previous films that he's done. Um, so this kept me busy for most of the movie. I'd say 80% of the movie, I was, I was tallying my results, how many times certain things happened. Oh my God. And writing down what those uh, elements were. So I have a list here of about 12 things, and uh, I'm going to read them to you now, what I expected to see from this movie. <clears throat> General whorish product placement, product placement for fast food or restaurant chain, fart jokes, dick crotch related humor does not include genital injury. Mm, that's very specific. Genital injury, oh. someone falling down, uh, cameos by Sandler's failed SNL friends, okay. cameos by sports figures, Cameos by non-SNL celebrities slash non-sports figures. Animal cruelty. Oh. Jokes at the expense of physical abnormality or ethnicity. Those could maybe be separated into two categories, but it's basically just jokes at the expense of people that are different. Mm. So I just put them together. Racists and crippled jokes. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then finally, scenes of forced sentimentality to trick the audience into thinking the movie has a heart. So this, this kept me busy, uh, keeping track of these things throughout the movie. I noticed you didn't have a, a category for like like sex jokes or dick jokes or, or you know, perverted humor. No, no. The he's, Adam Sandler films usually more cleaner than a, that? A little bit. They're more just about people falling down and getting kicked in the dick. Mm. Not, not anything sexual usually. Okay. So, uh, But speaking of that, I was horribly wrong on only one thing on my list here. Look at, look at the results for genital injury. <gasps> it's a big fat goose egg. Wow. I was shocked, I was shocked. But he more than made up for it in, in every other category. Sure, um, sure. This was actually more of each element than I could have possibly imagined. So like Jay, I also made a list, but since I haven't seen an Adam Sandler film before, my list primarily consisted of 
scenes that I expected would happen in a comedy film like this, based on the trailer and based on what I knew about the premise, and kind of uh, general comedy movie cliches. Yeah. Um, I had 17. I got six out of 17 right for, uh, for a grade of F+. plus. Why the plus? Oh, it's because I graded my own paper. It should be pointed out that the things on your list here as far as like plot points and situations aren't horribly complex or no, complicated. They're pretty standard. They're actually. very, very standard. Like like if you're aiming for mediocre, this is the stuff you put in it. Yeah. And it didn't even rise to that. No, no. In fact, I was shocked at how, how little of things happened in this movie. Yes. And how, how they disregarded lots of the main characters and none, no one had any kind of thing yeah. to do yeah. in the film. It was, it was kind of shocking, but anyway, that's that. We'll get into these in detail during the course of our review. I'm just going to file them in the garbage. I put a little list together of things I want to do before I leave. Studio tour, beach, horseback riding. Let's go! Oh, oh my God! Maybe I should stay out through Hanukkah. So the first thing I expected was uh, home movie footage. Or, or some sort of flashback to them as kids. Yeah. And we were wondering whether or not they would use an actual little girl or a little boy in drag. And we both agreed that they wouldn't use a little boy in drag because it would be too weird. And creepy. But they used a little boy in drag. Yes. But actually before that, the film actually opens with this kind of documentary style footage of actual real life twins. Um, Cut, cutting from one twin to the other as they're telling stories about their twinness. Their relationships and growing up and all that stuff. Yeah. And, and it just starts. Yeah. There's, there's no <laughs> there's no music. There's no credits. It yeah. just says Happy Gilmore, the, the logo. And then, it's, and then this goes on for like five minutes. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know if they're trying to pad the running time or what. But later on towards the end, we find out what the real purpose of it was. Yes. Which we'll get into later. Watching the trailer, they show Adam Sandler at work. What's this about a twin? Oh, Jackie has a twin sister. Identical or fraternal? Uh, nocturnal, like a bat. <laughs> Apparently he's a big guy at work. So I think, of course, Jill's going to show up at work unannounced and embarrass him. It's me, it's Jill, I'm here, it works. Yeah, well, and then they show his coworkers in the trailer too. Yes. And they're like, oh, I didn't know you had a sister. So yeah. I'm like, for sure she's gonna show up at work and do something embarrassing. He's gonna be having a big meeting. He's going to be pointing at a at an easel with a, with a graph on it. And then she's gonna be going through the glass and come into the meeting room. This yeah. is my sister. And there's a, uh, that's something that, something that would happen in a typical comedy, but never shows up at work. No. Why? It would have been too hard to film it. It would have required choreographing the two Adam Sandlers and the split screen or green screen or however they do it. So they just didn't do that. So then uh, uh, I was wrong on that. Two of my other points were that the plot was going to revolve around Adam Sandler having to get the, the big account, you know, some sort of really big deal that would, that would make or break the company. Everyone would get fired or he would lose his job. He would yeah. lose his big bonus. Uh, he couldn't build the family uh, swimming pool that he had promised, uh, <laughs> a la uh, Mr. Griswold. Yes. Um, and something like that, and that Jill would sort of ruin an early on big meeting with the big client, somehow. A, a lunch date, let's do lunch. He talks and she shows up. Oh, hi! Oh, hi, it's me! You ruined the meeting with the big client. How am I ever gonna make this up? I'm this close to losing the account. <laughs> and and uh, that, none of that happened. None of that happened. Uh, what did they do instead of that? Nothing. Oh, yes. And that's, yes. One of, that's one of the most interesting points in the film. You see that um, Al Pacino's in the movie. You got me running, Compliments of Mr. Pacino. What? The? You got me the, they don't allude to the fact that Al Pacino's involved with uh, Adam Sandler's work. They just kind of say, Al Pacino wants to date the sister. You know all he wants to do is play Twister with your sister. Yeah, it comes across in the trailer like just a random A gag. random joke. Yeah. So I really wasn't expecting Al Pacino to be the central plot of the whole movie, which he ends up being. Yes, The yes. Al Pacino account is the big account, so it's kind of right there. 
Yeah, so I mentioned Adam Sandler. Uh, I didn't know what he was in the trailer. I thought he was just, yeah, obviously he's successful, but conveniently he's an ad executive. Yes, yes. That's that's where my, my list shocked me with the general horror's product placement. Uh, 13 counts of product placement and two counts of product placement for fast food or restaurant chain. They want to get Al Pacino in a Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin Did you Donuts. say Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts is in the movie. Dunkin' Donuts pl plays a prominent role in the film. So so the, the whole story literally is uh, Adam Sandler wants to get uh, uh, Al Pacino in a Dunkin' Donuts commercial. That is the whole movie. That's fine, but the problem with that whole thing is that there are no stakes yeah. involved in yeah. that. There's no like, we need to get this account. We need to shoot this Dunkin' Donut commercial or else our advertising firm collapses. Yeah, the company will go under or Adam Sandler will get fired. Yes. Uh, there's, there's nothing. It's just like, we need to get Al Pacino. Yes, and, and, that's, and that's it. it. Or it's like making a threat to someone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this or what, you're gonna kill me? Or what, you're gonna kill my family? I'm, I'm just gonna do this. Okay. You know all he wants to do is play Twister with your sister. It, it's a threat without a consequence. And yeah, in, in, yeah. In a film, you can't have, have a plot without stakes. You can't have nothing that's at stake. Right. You, can't have, you have no consequence to something that happens. It's what, it's what gets the audience involved in what they're watching. And even, even in a big, broad, dumb comedy even like in this, a big, dumb you comedy, have to have There's something. always something. Yeah. And, um, so the key word here is lazy. So, watching the trailer, I saw Katie Holmes was in it, and I had a couple things that Katie Holmes could do in the movie. Uh, she does nothing in the film. Literally nothing. Why don't these guys know how to jump rope? Why didn't you teach them? We were the double Dutch kings in our neighborhood. These guys can't do a single wing ding. If you'll see in the trailer, there's a, there's a little girl and, uh, and a little Indian boy are their kids. So I concocted this whole plot line <laughs> about Katie Holmes possibly not able to have kids or that they were working at it unsuccessfully. And that's why they had adopted these two kids. And then so at the end of the film, I, I thought everything would come full circle. Katie Holmes would get pregnant around Christmas time or Hanukkah time or whatever, and she would get pregnant and, and Jill still would be there and they'd all be in the hospital and they would do the ultrasound. <laughs> and then on the, on the screen, the picture would come up and the doctor would of course be played by SNL actor so-and-so. Or maybe a sports figure. Maybe That'd be a, sports a good cameo figure. for yeah, a sports yeah, figure. Like, is Terry it, Bradshaw would show up as the doctor. Isn't it funny that Terry Bradshaw is the doctor? But anyways, they would be doing the ultrasound and, and then the image would come up and they would they, and they would cut to Jill and she would go, it's twins! And then they would show Adam Sandler and you go, make some sort of comical face. To, of course, maybe lead in for a sequel or to tie everything in a nice comedy bow. Yeah. Uh, Katie Holmes does nothing the whole film. So we all know Katie Holmes is married to Tom Cruise, who is a weirdo cultist Scientologist. So the Church of Scientology, let's get into that a little. Oh, sure. Uh, it, it's, it's nothing but a, a fucking weird religious cult that tries to siphon money off of its members. Oh, okay. Um, it is, uh, they're very litigious, they're very militant, yeah. and um, they're fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they believe in spaceships and reincarnation and, and um, and they also believe that if you give them large amounts of money, you will get aboard the spaceship to Xenon, yes. the, the planet of the, of the alien gods. So Katie Holmes, uh, whose career has nosedived since she married Tom Cruise, appears in this movie. Yeah. Um, we don't see much of Katie Holmes anymore, except for in the tabloids. Right. Um, so we are wondering why she's in this movie. Um, we think it might be a movie that she's in because Tom Cruise gave the stamp of approval. On yeah, it. yeah. She, she doesn't do anything in this movie to like showcase her acting ability. It's not like a breakout role or something memorable. Right, but maybe maybe Tom Cruise knows that if she's in an Adam Sandler film, she'll get a giant paycheck mm -hmm. without having to do anything. So I thought Katie Holmes' character might have some depth maybe give her some sort of interest in classic literature, you know, Jane Austen books or something like that. Sure. Uh, so I thought maybe they would have like this, uh, this book club thing with all the ladies in the neighborhood, all the rich old white women, and then Jill, why don't you come sit in on our book club? And then Jill would come in and they would, they would all be talking like, hmm, yes, I believe that the, the, uh, the, this novel really says this and this and says <laughs> this in metaphors. And, blah, blah, blah. and then Jill would go, well, I just got done reading Twilight. 
That didn't happen. Instead, nothing happened. One of my mentions in the comedy department was that Jill would have a bathroom incident. Involving diarrhea or farts. Diarrhea or farts. And, and so I, I, I have 12 fart jokes. Um, and conveniently, they tie in with one of my other categories, which is jokes at the expense of physical abnormality or ethnicity. Mm. Because the setup is Jill eats Mexican food for the first time, and it makes her poop. But it is set up that she goes to some sort of outdoor party um, with the, the family's Mexican gardener. Wait, the gardener was a Mexican? Yeah, yeah. What is this, a science fiction film? Seriously, honey, can't you try a little harder? She's your sister. So what we should mention is that Jack and Jill is the most racist film since the birth of a nation. Um, Adam Sandler manages to create the most passively racist scene in, in film history. Yes, uh, but there's a but. At there, the end of it. There's a big but because uh, his gardener is, of course, uh, uh, a Mexican. Uh, and the gardener makes tons and tons of horrifyingly racist jokes. Lazy racist jokes, Lazy too. racist yeah. jokes. Like, they just got over the border yeah, and his, things like that. Yeah, so. I just snuck across the border. And then everyone's like, you didn't just say that, did you? He goes, I'm just kidding. And then, yeah. and then he goes, she goes to the picnic with him. And he's like, this is my son Juan. This is my other son, Juan. This is my daughter, Juanita. And like he names everyone Juan, and she goes, Wow, everyone's named Juan. And he goes, I'm just kidding. Then, so then they play soccer. The, there's an elderly grandmother character in the sequence who also falls into my physical abnormality category oh. because she's missing all of her teeth and she has big weird she's eyes. She's old, yeah. And, and that also falls into my uh, someone falling down category. Oh, she, right. she gets knocked over twice in the sequence, and I guess it's supposed to be hilarious because it's an old lady, uh, but they, they revive her. Going back to the, the uh, ethnicity jokes, they revive her with, with hot peppers, and that's the joke. Later she eats them as well. Mm. Uh, they revive her again after she gets hit in the face by the stick during the piñata sequence. Yes, yeah. Um, so yeah, they play pinata, they eat Mexican food, they play soccer. Um, I'm surprised they, they weren't picking vegetables too. Uh, or washing bed sheets. I mean, seriously, and then, and then he starts making all these jokes. He makes one joke after the other for no reason. It's not like, like that scene where there's this person that doesn't understand Mexican culture coming in and that's why he's making the jokes at the person, like yeah. kind of to to, to, to fuck around with him, to, to play with his mind. But she comes in just with an open heart and an open mind. Like, I'm gonna come to your party. Yeah. And, and, and so there's no reason for him to do that. Um, so it's just Adam Sandler having cheap laughs at the expense of Mexican people, and at the same time getting away with it because it's a Mexican person telling the joke. Yeah. And they're very juvenile jokes. They're like playground humor. I mean, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a racist and I find it offensive. So I was not expecting Jill to go to a racist Mexican party, which kind of falls into several of the other comedy things I was expecting to see in this film and didn't. Um, I really expected to see Jill in uh, a bathing suit. Yes. Perhaps yes. even uh, a thong or a string bikini with a fat suit, you know, for, for visual yucks. Yeah, but that would require Adam Sandler to put on some sort of prosthetic appliance or makeup stuff and that's just too much work well yeah you're right uh, just throwing a wig on his head and smearing lipstick on quickly is 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 that's all you need uh, well even that's too much work mm. yeah and then you know there's uh, a couple of things i did get right um big bra big panties joke i had on my list it happened that's the joke is that she has big panties and she holds them up and puts them on even though she's not that Horribly obese. No, no. She's obese enough to, to break uh, all four of a horse's legs, of a pony's legs. Let's go! <laughs> they probably had to shoot that pony. Jay, was a visual effect. But if in the reality of the movie, if that happened, oh, yeah. they should have shown that sequence right after that, where all the, the little kids are crying, and the handler comes out and just shoots the pony in the face. That would have been great. <laughs> oh, oh my god! There's another scene in the film too, which we should discuss a little before we continue on with the plot, is the whole man and drag humor. 
Sure, sure. And, and how most movies where guys dress up like women, the humor comes from them adjusting to being a woman, to kind of like forgetting like that they have to sit down when they pee, um, to like discussing things with other women. They're, they're playing a role or, yeah. or trying on the bra and putting on the wig and, and, and not kind being of, able to walk in high heels. Not, yes, that's yes, a classic. Um, yeah. Um, or there's a scene in Jack and Jill when they're on the cruise ship and they're in the exercise room. There's these two big bodybuilder guys and they're huge and they're lifting weights and then Jill comes over, oh, I'm gonna lift weights now. And then she starts lifting weights, like the same weights they're lifting with ease. And she's talking with Katie Holmes about something and she goes, can you throw a couple more weights on there? And they do and they're like, and then she's lifting them. Problem with that scene, and problem <laughs> with that joke is that the joke is ne never established that Jill is superhumanly strong for some reason. And the, the, the logic of the movie is not that Jill is a guy in drag. It's funny when there's a guy in drag and everyone thinks it's a woman and he punches the other guy out. And everyone goes, oh, that girl is strong. Yeah. But the audience knows that it's really a man. And that's why it's funny. So it's like they wanted that scene, but the logic didn't allow for that scene. Because so Jill they, is supposed to be a woman. Yeah. So they just did it anyways. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and it's like, you don't know what you're doing. There actually is one joke in this movie that works. Well, one that's actually a crafted joke. There, there is literally one crafted joke in this movie that has a setup and a payoff. Yeah. Should we tell them what it is? Uh, sure. Are you concerned about spoilers? I guess no one has seen this movie. Well, right? I would think anyone that is interested in seeing this movie, I hope we spoil it well, for let me, you. Let me, let's explain the difference then. Okay. Because th this will make it real clear. Okay. There's a scene in the film, Jack decides to dress up like Jill um, for multitude of reasons. <laughs> he goes into the bathroom on the cruise ship and there's a guy, there's the bathroom attendant guy, this old guy, you know, the uh, doorman type. And he's like, hello, sir. He's like, hi, you know, runs into the stall, changes into the woman and comes out. And then the bathroom attendant looks at him and goes, and grabs his boobs and adjusts them because he noticed one was hanging. And I'm saying, I was like, thanks. Yeah. Scene ends. Many scenes later, that same bathroom attendant walks out of the bathroom and runs into Jill, who is really a woman, sees Jill and, and goes, then grabs Jill's boobs and, and adjusts them. She's like, what? Punches them. Yeah. Point is, <laughs> it's a joke. It, it has a setup and a payoff. It's, yes. It's set up and explained and it's paid off and mm -hmm. you understand what happens. And there are no jokes in the movie like that. It's either someone falls down, someone farts, someone kick someone at the end David Spade's in drag and he decides to grab Katie Holmes and throw her on the floor. And that's, yeah, it's it's like, viol it's just violence. It's, 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 it's not. Yeah, stupid, pointless violence, farting, falling down, things like that. <laughs> well, speaking of the film and laziness, yeah, the, the doubling effect of Jack and Jill was, was the worst since I've seen since the 80s? Yeah, well, it seems like that should be one of the draws of this movie. Like, come see Adam Sandler play these two characters. It's kind of like the Eddie Murphy and the Naughty Professor movies, where it's like, that's all people talked about in those movies, was the way he played off himself right. and interacting with himself. And that was uh, a selling point of the movie. Mm -hmm. Here, it's just, yeah, awkward split screens and or green screen. Well, and... they're very infrequently together, and they don't really play off each other. At right, all. And, right. and like, yeah, like you said, that should have been a selling point, but it's not. They're often in different scenes together. And it's just Adam Sandler in a wig, too. Yeah. It's just, it's just very, very lazy. Yeah! Continued in part two.